year is 2012. England now languishes under a new reign of terror, a regime guaranteed to strike fear into the hearts of all men. The country has fallen into the hands of man's primeval enemy, woman. <laughs> Women now govern, they are the breadwinners. Men are completely subjugated. They are forced to do the housework, to wear frocks. They even have feminine names. And the dreaded secret police see that these new stringent measures are enforced. Our heroes in this tragic tale are two simple, honest, straightforward Englishmen, Janet and Betty. <laughs> Wanted by the secret police for crimes against the state, they were hiding out in an old cottage. When the area is surrounded, they have to find another method of breaking through the roadblock. Good thing I brought this knife. Hmm. Yes, I was just looking at that. How many blades has it got? Twenty-seven. Hmm. I've had it since I was a brownie. <laughs> you've never broken these tins with? Yeah. The only thing that's broken is the thing that takes the stones out of horses' hooves. Well, it's not broken, actually. It's bent. Oh. Melanie Harper did that at school. Oh, uh huh. Sat on it. <laughs> Duff Jack Melanie. Yeah, yeah. Thick skin. Mm. Wonder what he's doing now. He's an actress. Mm. Oh, yeah. Just played the lead in Harry Queen of Scots at the National. Oh. <laughs> Now then, anything else you'd like to eat, old boy? Um, well, what is that? Well, there's some chocolate here. Oh, there's a Pars bar. Oh, I have that. I have a Pars bar here. <laughs> now then, we really must get organised if we're going to contact my brother-in-law. Don't you think it's a mite dangerous, old boy? I mean, we're less than 30 miles from my cottage. The police are bound to be spreading out. If we're going to go to ground, it's our only hope. Yes. Are you sure this is the pub he works at? Sir? What, the green woman? Yes, yes, absolutely positive, yeah. It's a good pub. Brian and I used to come down and visit him sometimes at weekends. Not that she ever liked him, really. Oh, he's not her brother, then? No, no, he's my sister's husband. Oh, which sister's that? My younger sister, Harold. Then what's your brother-in-law's name? Diana. Oh. Uh, and he's bound to cycle down this road on his way to work? Yes, it's the only road. You see, the pub's about a quarter of a mile down there. Right, now then, I've got some uh, drawing pins, I've got some tin tacks, and I've got a few large fish hooks for good measure. Come on. we better get spring pins. How's that? Yes, that should do it. A bit drastic, don't you think? Wouldn't we have had to jump out of the bushes and wave at him? Oh, no, no, he wouldn't stop. He was once stopped on his way back from getting some groceries by uh, what he thought was a man. Turned out to be a woman in a dress. Good. Oh, it was terrible. Yes, she assaulted him. Came back with his frock all torn. <laughs> Fortunately, she never laid a finger on his groceries. <laughs>
Diana! Betty, good gracious, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You're in a car. What happened to the bike? <laughs> I've been fiddling the housekeeping. But what are you doing here? No time to tell you now. Get in quick, Janet. Uh, look, I'll turn the car around and I'll tell you as you go. Right? No, never mind about that. Just hurry. Come on. Betty and Janet lose no time as they travel to tell Diana the whole story. He, in turn, informs our two heroes that the pub now belongs to him, and like the true blue old-fashioned chauvinist he is, offers them a job. And so, the very next night, in this sleepy little village far from the madding crowd. Hey, you're a nice little thing. What are you doing in the dump like this, son? Just pin money. My wife's away in the Navy. Here, come and sit in my lap. Oh, I think there's room for both of us. <laughs> Do you know my little grey home in the West? No. How about my little brown flat down the road? Yeah. <laughs> what about after the ball? Oh, I mean, after you finish here. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Excuse me. What's your name, my dear? Uh, Beryl, madam. Married? No, 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 no. Thought not. I can read men like a book. Oh, really? What system do you use? Braille. Oh. <laughs> oh. Really? Oh, Janet, uh, can you take an order in the other bar? Man in a green dress. Oh, it's all go round here, isn't it? Oh, God, that woman's going to start her patriotic songs again now. Big busted girls who will all burn their bras to be free. Shoulders to shoulders with bosoms like boulders. Come swing down the highway with me. Throw out your chest, girls. Dispense with your best girls. We're marching to make history. Men have always fooled us and they rule us. Good morning, Betty. Pardon? I say good morning, Betty. No, no, my name is Beryl. Beryl Cambridge, ma'am. No, it's not. It's Betty Chalmers. We were at school together. You're captain of the netball team. Shh, not so loud. I used to see you when I was on my way back from cricket in your frilly netball skirt. I used to think you were the most wonderful creature on earth. But I was only 13, and you were 17. I'm sorry, I can't place you. No, well, a lot of water has flowed under the bridge since then. Yeah, quite a few gin and tonics as well. I doubt if I get into that netball skirt now. Still got that twinkle in your eye, though. Look, uh... Jack, you do know there's a big reward offered for your capture, do you? It's in all the papers. Don't worry. I'm not going to give you away. What, then? I want to keep you for myself. What? I want to hide you. I've got a nice little house a couple of miles from here. We could uh, renew old acquaintanceship. And no one to disturb us. But I never knew you. Well, I knew you in my dreams. Dreams? Well, what do you say? Well, I don't mind if you don't. <laughs> Can't wait. Pour me a gin and tonic, would you? Yes, yes, of course. <clears throat> How do you like it? Seven parts gin, one part tonic. <laughs> Slice of lemon. When I want a lemonade, I'll ask for one. I say, you're wearing pyjamas. Mm. Won't you join me? What, in your pyjamas? Well, maybe you could start off in this. What's that? Oh, I see, that's pretty nice, isn't it? Why don't you try it on? Take a shower, hurry back. Yes, all right. I'll tell you what. 
I'll take a shower and then try it on with Harry Mack. <laughs> Even better. I say, it's jolly nice of you to hide me like this. Uh, did you think you'd be able to hide my friend Janet as well? You know, later on. Later on. Let's have a day or two to ourselves first, shall we? He'll understand. I mean, you did put that in your note, didn't you? A day or two, yes. Well, go on. You're wasting time. Hello. State Police. I wish to speak to somebody about one of the missing men. Betty Chalmers. So Jack is up to no good after all. What will happen to Betty? Will the police send their special squad to get him? As he steps from the shower, will he be grabbed by the heavies? <laughs> Find out next week in another extraordinary episode of The Worm That Turned.